in the life of a $20,000 a month TikTok clipper. This video that was posted by Musa onto his Twitter about two weeks ago. After watching their video for a minute or two, I end the screen recording and crop the video so that it fits the screen. It went mega viral, amassing over 20 million views in just a few days. One of my videos last month made me $1,200 from one video. But not everyone who saw the video was happy about it. How I make thousands of dollars and get millions of views in a month on TikTok. One, steal content. Bro said, here's how I steal content to make thousands for myself with his whole chest. I'm crying, dog. Homie rents an office space to be a professional scumbag. It sparked a massive debate in the creative community, and Musa was at the center of it all. Around the concept of ethical clipping. Largely popularized by Andrew Tate, the concept of clipping has been around for a while. Many people have followed in his footsteps, using it to their benefit whilst growing to crazy levels of fame. But others argue that it's unethical, lazy, and as the community no pointed out on Musa's post, illegal. Despite the criticism, Musa was open to explaining himself, and welcomed the idea of debating the topic of ethical clipping. If any YouTubers would like to debate the topic of ethical clipping, DM me. And one day later, he would do exactly that, taking on YouTube veteran Yo Malna a Twitter space in front of thousands of people live. There was no escaping now. But before we get into the debate, I think it's best we explain exactly what it is that Musa does. So I reached out for an interview, and he agreed to show me around his iconic studio and reveal everything. I'm MP, and today we're going to be exploring the ethics of TikTok clipping. So sit back, grab a snack, and get ready for the ride. Yeah, my name's Musa. I make TikTok clips. This is my office. I sit down right here. I get my phone out and I start making some TikTok clips. I can easily pump out maybe 10 clips, 10 clips in like an hour. How much will one clip make on average? So if I can get five clips to get a million views a month, which is super easy because I'll be uploading like 60 clips in a month, then we're looking at around $5,000 and that's just one page. Okay, pause. How exactly do people make money from TikTok? It wasn't really possible before February 2023. TikTok announced its new monetization program to compete with YouTube, where videos over one minute long on accounts with over 10,000 followers were now eligible to make money. As a result, videos like these soared in upload frequency. Based on averages, videos with 1 million views are roughly equal to $1,000 each. So if you have a number of viral videos or run multiple different accounts, you could be making more than $10,000 a month. Yeah, at my peak, I was running upwards of 30 pages easily, all posting daily. So you only need 10,000 followers and 100,000 views in the past 30 days, which is tiny. It's really, really easy to achieve. Sometimes I've been able to do it in like five or six days, if not quicker. And this is exactly why people are mad. What Musa is doing isn't exactly hard. With a little bit of training, pretty much anyone could do it. And it doesn't take long to reap the rewards of other people's hard work. At the end of the day, all you have to do is find a clip, save it, add gameplay and post it. You don't have to go out and do all of the other hard work or invest any money, unlike the people that you get the videos from. One of the main criticisms which Musa faces is that people consider him a theft. So do you think you steal content? No, definitely not. Anyone can say whatever they want about me, but I know me too well to know that that's not the case. Yeah. It's mutually, it's objectively mutually beneficial. Objectively. What it all boils down to is that whether you like it or not, by me taking your content and repurposing it, it will benefit. Yeah. But I just wonder in today's world, for the people at the top, is it just mutually beneficial, right? Like even Emma mm -hmm. Chamberlain's uh, show on Spotify, that's a, it, it's video podcast on Spotify. It gets re-uploaded to YouTube all the time. Spotify has an exclusive deal with Emma. Do they care? Probably not, because that's discovery. Musa clearly feels strongly about this, and he has reason to. You've probably seen this guy before, Sneeko. But what if I told you you would have never seen him if it wasn't for Musa? And I actually landed him through an Amigo live stream. So he was live streaming himself on Amigo. I went and stream sniped him. I pitched him on the on the call. We literally took him from the ground up. He even messaged me the other day reminding me how far we've come together. And he was literally telling me like, yo, don't forget that you told me to start streaming and get into it. So we started making clips. And before we knew it, did a million followers in one month on one page. Did 110 million views in 28 days on his main page. And now he's at over 6 billion views on TikTok. So. I'm one of the biggest streamers in the world. You can see the spike on the Schneeko social blade from when he was pulling like no views and getting no subscribers all the way to literally just going absolutely insane. Obviously, the reason I did it is because I'm fully aware that TikTok clips are gonna redirect all the way to the main content and make him a bunch of money. So here we can see first month I started pushing TikTok content. We did 742,000 followers in a month, just a single month, 107 million views. This obviously, 
positively affected his YouTube. He did 277,000 subscribers and then 32 million views. And we wasn't even posting shorts at this time. So it's literally all long form. Uh, he made $150,000 in that month. Bear in mind, Sneaker had never seen more than like 20K of YouTube ad revenue in a single month ever across first channel and second channel. These results for Sneeko was a case study that Musin needed to start his short form agency. When he blew up, everyone wanted to work with me. This is where he makes most of his money. And let me tell you, the amount of money he makes is where it gets really, really crazy. Rumble, a streaming service valued at almost $2 billion paid Musa $25,000 per month to post 200 clips a day over 100 accounts with their logo front and center. And if you're just the average creator, Musa's agency charges $3,000 to post two clips a day. Two clips a day, guaranteed millions of views and guaranteed growth. To be clear, this isn't what people are mad at. I'm only bringing this up to show that there is a correlation between clipping and views. Nobody in the debate has any issue with consensual use of another party's content. Where it does get unethical for people, however, is when clips are taken without getting permission from the creator. Taking hours of work in just minutes, getting millions of views and making thousands off of it. Are you always doing this in a professional sense where you do get the good graces of a content creator? The answer is no, I don't always get permission. And the reason Reason I don't always get permission is because I believe it is ethical. One thing we can all agree on is that TikTok clips, whether they are from the creator or not, inherently benefit the creator. So Thousands let's be honest, on YouTube, we, don't, we don't necessarily fully agree on that. I think clipping by itself, I don't think is an awful and terrible thing, but I think there are certain levels where it starts to become less beneficial. So my name is Stadler, my tag is Radstad, and I am a video editor slash short form content manager slash producer for Ludwig, The Yard, and advisor for numerous other creators. If someone takes a clip of mine, if someone take a moment from my stream, I'm a smaller creator, and uploaded it to Reddit, for example, the live stream fails, it goes onto Reddit, it links directly to a Twitch clip, which links to my profile, it has my username, everything there is branded around me. If someone were to take Take one of my clips from stream and they were to just upload it to TikTok and add some GTA footage underneath it and just have something like me telling a joke and then upload it and then watermark it themselves, which is something that Musa does. If there is no way to find me, I get no benefit. The brand is the content. Seeing the content is the brand. That's it. So more eyes on the brand eventually funnels. I think I agree to an extent, but I think it's more of a thing where the strength of the brand is what is what decides all that. If I'm walking around with a Nike logo, people see that, oh, Nike, because Nike is one of the strongest logos in the world. Everyone knows Nike. If I'm wearing some other brand, like let's say Scotch and Soda, is a smaller brand, not as many people will know that kind of branding. If I'm wearing anything else, like say like a mom and pop shop and I have a branding, people will see it and think, oh, that's cool. And that's all they'll think. They won't necessarily go out of their way to find the original creator. They will just think, oh, I know this. Whilst I think that most people can agree that clipping is free advertising. It's clear that not all of it is of equal value. In early 2022, the topic of reaction drama was brought up after XQC reacted to a high quality video made by Lamino on stream. As with clipping, there were two different sides, but I thought that Dark Viper AU made a great point against it, pointing out that after one watches a piece of reaction content, you have no reason to watch the original piece of content, taking away impressions and views from the original creator. This is relevant because not all clipping comes from streams or longer videos. Sometimes, whole videos are taken and re-uploaded with GDA gameplay underneath them, something that Brody Fox complained about in the debate, as he runs an animation channel. Animation is not cheap, it's not easy, it's not fast. What happened to me? I'm uploading four times a day. About one to two TikToks every day will be claimed as unoriginal content by TikTok, which means that I can't make money off that content, even though it is my content. I would submit appeals that go into legality. My appeals were beginning to get rejected for unoriginal content, even though it's my content. Should every creator be happy if you post their work? Definitely, absolutely. I'm doing work for you for free. Free exposure for free. I'm formatting your content on a different different platform for free. Do you sympathize with maybe smaller creators or creators in general who are mad at you? No, no, not at all. I'm doing you a favor. You're just not smart enough to get it yet. Hold on, this attitude seems awfully familiar. It's funny, he took the opposite stance. He's like, all oh, these people keep re-uploading my videos on TikTok. And he sent me this one TikTok with like 30 million views where it was just a part of his video. And I was like, I just called him. I was like, Yo, you f***ing dip. You know how many people of that 30 million had no clue who you were? How many views that drove to your videos? I was like, what the f are you going on about? Yeah, what you want to strike about? this? Despite how loud the opposing views are, when YouTube's biggest creator praises the work of clippers and reaction content, there's not much else to argue. This attitude gives clippers the confidence to keep on going, but there may be one thing which could stop them. DMCA. If someone DMCA's me though, I'll leave it. You, just... you really don't like the clips, send the page of DMCA, 
If it's my page, I'll leave it. I'm just not gonna click on there. But that doesn't address the fact that what clippers are doing, as pointed out by Twitter, may actually be illegal under fair use. But he suggests otherwise. But yeah, no, it's not illegal. So I spoke to lawyers about this after reading the community, you know? He told me that it's not actually against international law. He said, as soon as you add your own stuff to it, like you're not competing. So it's not illegal. What I'm doing is not illegal at all because I'm not competing, I'm promoting. And one of the issues that I've talked about and I talked to Musa about and I tried to make sure he knew, what he is doing is he's effectively making himself the biggest name in this clipping space. And what you do when you decide to run a company around this is you run a lot more risk. The bigger you make it, the bigger you make your face. Because now instead of just taking work from one creator, he is taking work from dozens of creators without their permission and uploading it to benefit himself. If they want to, aside from just DMCAing, they can directly sue and they can can sue for money that is rightfully theirs because it's their content. If he were to take the entirety of the movie, The Titanic, and he were to add like GTA underneath it, is that transformative? Do you think they'd be like, ah, oh, you know, hey, well, that is our movie he's uploading, but he did add GTA, so we can't sue him? Like, I mean, I think you just made a really good point about like, if my clips get re-uploaded, it's like, I, I got paid for the work, but now it's being uploaded. So it's like mm. diminishing my value and I should be getting compensated for those views. It's something that was just brought up with um, the writer's strike in uh, Hollywood, how streaming mm. services are getting all of these views and all of these views but the writers and the all the creative people behind the scenes they're not getting compensated for these extra views so yes whilst it is in the best interest of the i guess in our cases it would be the creators it is in their best interest for the streaming service to repost mm. their things it then trickles down into the workers musa has over 350,000 followers on instagram and absolutely bangs views and a lot of the accounts you see posting this type of content is thanks to him not because he runs all of them but because of his teachings as we saw at the beginning of the video, he gives a step-by-step -step guide on how to do what he does. And at the end of the video, you always hear him say this. If you want to learn from me and how I do what I do, you can join the free Discord in my bio. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the video. Just a quick note, unfortunately while editing this, Musa's Discord got deleted. So the numbers in the screenshots aren't accurate. But nonetheless, the point still stands. He made a new one, so he's bouncing back. Anyway, back to the video. His server called Media Meadows has at least 200,000 people in it. But it's split into two different demographics the free side and the paid side. It costs $40 a month. And if you subscribe, you gain access to a variety of different features like updated courses, free resources, new methods, and 24 seven support from his staff. There's no absolute way to tell how many people are subscribed to this, but there has been some speculation. And I do recognize that just through the amount of people that are online, not offline, but online under that media master's role, you're making at least $32,000 a month. I think that $40 a month is a super fair price point. To make that money back, you only need 40,000 views. And I have a guarantee that if you follow all the steps and don't get 5 million views in the next 30 days, I'll give you a full refund. I actually don't get a lot of refunds. The server clearly isn't a scam and paying for it almost always benefits his students. There's a channel specifically dedicated to his students' results. And it's crazy to see how much money kids are making just from clipping. What's the craziest result you've seen from one of your students? Um, so I saw one kid, he made like over 200 grand in a month. It was from rolling bottles down the stairs. So it wasn't actually from clipping, but he saw the opportunity, made over 200 grand in a month. Wow, that's crazy. But that's not all that the server has to offer. And there's one specific section which really highlights the underground nature of the business. The marketplace. Here, people can buy accounts for as cheap as $1 or upwards of thousands. Could you walk me through the process of buying an account? How secure is it? It's just as risky as everything else. You go and open a ticket, and then in the ticket, you're gonna have a bunch of these. So these are examples of tickets here. Person said, how much is the account? And then they'll do the chat all in the Discord. Mods will never DM you. They'll never do chats in DMs. They'll never set separate group chats. They'll never do any of that stuff. I pay them all well enough to the point where they don't need to rob you. Servers like these where you can buy and sell accounts is so valuable because not every country has access to TikTok's creator beta program. So some people have to buy their way in to get access to it. For others, they might not have the patience to grind an account up to 10,000 followers and might want to pay for a head start. In spite of this, unfortunately scams are inevitable. If it's completely like unfair, then I'll refund the person. We have had some big deals like go south. For example, this one guy got scammed of like a $2,000 account and it was like a new way of scamming, you know, that we obviously hadn't prepared for. One guy had a $2,000 account. I compensated him like $1,000 out of my own pocket but, um, but for the most part like if things are sketchy we just don't do it so we'll say look we don't want a middle madness service it doesn't look right regardless of this fact it's clear that musa has built a product both with his agency and with his server that serves people well and regardless of what you think about the ethics of clipping one thing you can't question is his personal ethics yeah so it's like i'm genuinely working towards i want to make 100 million in the next five years mm -hmm. i want to be 100 million by 25 liquid 
then take 90 million and spend it on building mosques, hospitals, and all this other stuff that, that contributes to a community, then go and lay the bricks myself as well. Because giving the money is not charity enough. It's probably going to be around for a while. What would you like to see be done with clipping? What What's your solution? I mean, my big solution is I think proper crediting, I think, is the easiest fix uh, across the board that I think is not a big ask. If you're going to be a clipper, I think the most ethical thing you can do, the best thing you can do is to reach out to the creator and say, hey, listen, I would love to split the revenue with you in whatever extent you think is fair. If you can work with them to find something that works and you get the advertising and you start to push their stuff and they also get the benefit and it goes to their team, I think that is the best solution. If you had one message to the world or to any creators out there or even people looking to do something like you, what would it be? Cheap hustler, man. You need to lose enough to the point where you deserve to win. Believe me, like I tried this TikTok a lot. Uh, I did a lot of testing and it didn't just uh, come overnight. Now we're at the point where it can come overnight, but if you keep hustling, you'll get to, to that point, you know, it's just anything can work, you just need to try harder.